Hey everybody, this is Townsend. I'm a singer, songwriter, musician, and mental health advocate. I started the You're Not Alone project and podcast to help educate, spread awareness, and simply help you feel a little less alone no matter what you're going through. Thanks so much for tuning in to season two of You're Not Alone with Townsend, and I hope you enjoy. What is up, guys? It is Townsend. Welcome to season two of You're Not Alone with Townsend. Guys, I am so excited about this season. We've got amazing content, amazing guests coming up. And for our first episode, I'm like super excited slash nervous to get this new season started, guys. It is just so awesome, the people that we have lined up. First and foremost, we're going to be chit-chatting with Miss Coach Selena. So she is a life coach in the Central Arkansas area. I have gotten to know her actually kind of through this podcast and through music. Um, I am always blown away with women who take charge and are girl bosses, and she just blows me away. I love watching all the things she posts, all the things she does. Right before we hopped on here, we were talking about all the women we know that own businesses and we were like yeah go us like it's so cool I yeah. love it so so much um so welcome thank you so much for hopping on here I would love to pick your brain about 2023 and just like getting people ready for the new year would that be cool absolutely it's one of my very favorite topics Yes, I'm so excited you took time for us. Thank you so much. I also, I want to give a shout out to that beautiful, uh, for the people listening, she's got a beautiful bird painted behind her. So she, one, she's supporting local businesses downtown, but she's also supporting local artists as Jessica Jones. As we know, if you live in Conway, she paints all these beautiful murals. So we have to give a shout out to that amazing background. I feel like I need one behind me. I'm sure she'd be happy to do that for you right that would be so <laughs> cool oh my gosh if I could have her mural behind me yeah I, that's gonna be my next goal get a big mural behind me support women businesses everywhere I love it Super all right. motivating that's right no kidding it kind of makes me feel good it's all bright and cheery okay mm -hmm. guys so we are so excited Let's go ahead and introduce you to the listeners. I'm sure if they live in Conway, they know all about you, but who is Selena? So what is your job? What is your title? Tell us a little bit about you. Yep. I am a mom to three. My oldest just started college at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. Wow. Um, I have a 13-year-old son and a nine-year-old daughter and have been married for 23 years to my Goodness husband, gracious. Mike. That's a long time. Um, so <laughs> it is a long time. Uh, luckily, it's super happily married. Yay. I love it. Um, and I am a life harmony coach. My goal and mission and dream in life is to help us busy moms overworked people, women with so many things on their plate have harmony with their faith, with their family and their career to stop living up to everybody else's expectations, but to design the life that they're excited about so that they can make an impact on their families, on their communities, um, and as large an impact as they want to make. So I have, I started my own business, which was a super scary slash fun thing to do. Absolutely. Um, uh, five or six years ago, Impact Life Coaching, and um, have been running that successfully in Conway. COVID caused me to take my business virtual. And, um, and then since then, I have been adding other coaches and consultants to my team. And, um, and now I have a team of coaches and consultants where we work with business leaders, community leaders, family leaders to level up in the areas of health, wealth, and leadership. And it really all goes back to the heart of that so that we can have harmony with our faith, our family, and our career. I love that so much. Ironically enough, so I chatted with one of my best friends today and both females, and we were just talking about how we feel like there's not enough time in the day, especially being a female. Mm -hmm. Like we're trying to fit in this mold of society of working that 40 plus hour job, plus having kids, plus being the domesticated housewife, plus just rocking mm -hmm. at life. And being like, there's so much stuff to do. So being in harmony and finding time for yourself and that self-help and self-care. Oh, it's so important. So I love what you do. That is so neat. Um, for those wondering, and for myself, I don't think I could really put a definition to it myself. So for 
all of us listening, what exactly is a life coach? Like, what does that term mean exactly? Yeah, that's a really, a really great question. And to put it simply, a life coach helps their client get a really clear vision of where they want to go in the future and then get a clear understanding of where they're standing now and then help them to develop a plan that's personalized and relevant and motivating to that client for how they're going to take each step along the way to get there. Um, So when I'm looking at being a life harmony coach, I help each individual client say, well, what does that mean for me? If I want to have harmony in my life, what does that mean that I want things to look like? How do I want to show up in the areas of my family and in my career? Because it's, we're not cookie cutter people that can have one set of advice that works for all of us, especially women who are caretakers of so many. We have to have individualized plans that um, are really tailor-made for us and honor our needs and values. So that is what I help my clients do to develop what is that going to look like for you and how are we going to overcome the obstacles, the pitfalls, the tired times that come along the way. So that's basically what a life coach does. Okay. So basically we all need a life coach. Um, yes, <laughs> <laughs> we would all. So basically after this, we need to sign up for Selena's life coach. Yeah. So it, it's basically like a life mentor helping us see the bigger picture. Yes. Like, I really, as a life coach, it's my job to help my clients zoom out yeah. to look at the bigger picture, but then also zoom in and say, what does that mean for the next step that I want to take? Cool. That is too cool. Now I will say I've heard, I've chatted with a couple of people, just small world been like, Oh, I know these people. I know these people. And I've actually had two people that said they worked with you directly and that you helped them succeed like significantly percentage wise ones doing business through you. So that is so cool. So thank you for what you do. Um, especially for women, since you kind of focus in on that, but you work with men as well too. Yeah. I do. Yes. Especially as my business has expanded. Um, I've grown to work with several men, male clients as well, for sure. For sure. But it's just that those women with the families at home have my heart, you know, and I'm like, Oh, I really want to serve them so well. And it is super rewarding to be able to walk with people and then see them make their own dreams come true. So exciting. I love it. I can feel that too. I'm the same way. Uh, and I'm not their life coach, but I'm almost like a, like a little cheerleader in the background. Yeah. When I see people succeed, I'm like, yeah, go you girl. Yay, I love that's it. That's right. All right. So let's hop in. So 2023 is here, which blows my mind, by the way, I feel like I just got used to 2022, but here we are 23. We're ready to rock and roll. So people get wrapped up in goals and resolutions. I feel like that's all we are seeing on social media and it's all people are talking about what advice would you give as we go into the new year as far as setting goals or bettering ourselves for the new year? Yeah, I brought to you today five tips for setting goals in the new year. I love it. So yeah, so this is actually like your everybody's free coaching session that they can come in and get some coaching from Coach Selena and then take it away and have an awesome 2023. So everybody Um, grab a pen and a piece of paper. mm -hmm. We are about to blow your mind, get you ready for the new year. Selena, would it be cool if we did like one at a time and chatted about them? Oh, I'd love that. Yeah, cool. let's do it. All right, let's start with number one. So what is number yes. one, your advice? Number one is don't wait. Don't start wait. right now. I think so many times we think, oh, things aren't like I want them right now. So I'm going to work on my goals when dot, dot, dot. I'm going to work on my goals when things quiet down a little bit. I'm going to work on my goals when I can figure out exactly what I want. I'm going to start Monday. Yeah, (laughs) that goes, I'm not going to lie. That goes for my diet after Christmas. I'm going to start not eating sweets after Christmas. I want to start not eating sweets after New Year's, after my birthday, after, you know, we just put it off so well. Right. We can put it off so well. I just heard a client today say, oh my gosh, Selena, I'm so glad I started that goal 
this many months ago because even though it was difficult to start, now that I'm this far in, I have set up some habits that are just going to stick with me. So my number one tip is don't wait. Do it now, even if it's not exactly how you think it should look. Yeah, just dive right in. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So right maybe in. just grab a piece of paper, think of some goals and go for it. Start just today. go for it. I love that. I love that. I think we're really good at procrastinating. For sure. And here is the wonderful thing. You can change your mind and make adjustments along the way. Who cares? Yeah. Just that literally, you saying that literally made me feel a little, little less nervous about setting goals, but you're right. It's just between you, right? Mm -hmm. It's not permanent. You can always erase it. I didn't even, isn't that crazy? I was thinking, you know, you set your goals and I'm such a perfectionist. I'm like, okay, I have to meet this goal and it has to be perfect. But even you saying that, like I said, I'm like, oh yeah, of course I can change it as I go. I want to personally thank you for taking the time to listen to these conversations. It truly means so much. We've changed so many lives for the better and we want to continue doing so throughout 2023. This project is made possible by sponsors and patrons. So if you'd like to help keep the You're Not Alone project going and hearing these amazing stories, we would love for you to join the family at patreon.com slash Townsend T Music. Just for signing up, you'll get free merch, discounts, and behind the scenes, patron only footage. Not only of my music, but of each episode. That's right. So each guest on every episode answers a few more questions that only patrons will be able to watch and listen to. So head on over to patreon.com slash Townsend Team Music and let's continue changing lives. You can. You can 100%. That's the really interesting thing. As you, right, we're designing this life that we love. We're creating a picture of where we want to go, but we're going to have to make adjustments along the way. Just be ready for that. Say, you know what? This is what I think my goal is. And it's only in like living through it, taking the next step that you're like, yeah, actually, I love this goal. I'm rocking it out. Or um, I love this goal. It's a little harder than I thought, but I'm going to keep going. Or, oh my gosh, this is a terrible goal idea. And I think I want to change my mind. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great one. So number one, get started, get going. That's right. Today. So are you, yes, yesterday. (laughs) Yesterday, that's it. Yesterday should have get, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So are you ready for number two? Oh man, I'm, I'm stoked now. Okay, I've already got my <laughs> pen and my paper out. All right, so what is number two? What are we looking okay, for? Okay, so number two, I would like you guys to answer this question for yourself. What does success mean to me? Here's why you have to answer that question for yourself. If you look around in the world, on advertisements, in magazines, on billboards, oh my goodness, on social media, you will see what other people are telling you success is. Success is this kind of look, these kinds of clothes, this kind of family, this kind of house, uh, this kind of car, this kind of feeling, or this kind of schedule. Or like we were talking at the beginning, the perfect job, the perfect house, the perfect blah, 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 blah. The world tells us every day what other people think our success should look like. And we will by default agree with them unless we really ask ourselves, is that what success feels like to me? What's the most important thing to me? What's my version of success? And really spending time, in my opinion, with the Lord and in prayer Um, but really just quiet by yourself too, figuring out what does success mean for me? That's number two tip for setting goals this year. I love that so much. So when I dove headfirst into music, I had to kind of do these five things um, that we're going to be chatting about. I know the first two for sure. I'm assuming the last three as these are lining up perfectly. But the biggest thing for me was 
what what do I want out of this? What does success look <laughs> like now? Because I'm about to do a giant life turn of events. Yes. And so sitting down, just like that, sitting down with myself, for me as well as a Christian, sit down and pray about it. Like, where am I supposed to be? What am I supposed uh -huh. to be doing? And it's really cool. You're right. Social media has such a huge impact on what you think and what you do. And there are times I just have to put everything on mute. Do you have to do that mm -hmm. as well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost yes. overwhelming. Very much so. Uh, one thing that I encourage all my clients to do is as I help them write this success definition, they write like one or two sentences about what success means to them. And then I encourage them to post it somewhere, even if it's just a post-it note on their mirror, um, because it's like we have to remind ourselves what we're going for, because the world is very loud <laughs> yeah. and our inner critics can be very loud and our, um, we can get confused so easily. So just to be drawn back to say, oh, this is what's important to me, right? I do it the same in the coach world, right? I can be like, oh, uh, how many followers do I have? How many people are clicking? How many interactions do I have? And I have to stop and say, wait, that's not what success means to you. It's that client that told you this, that said what a difference that made in their lives, that that is what is successful to you. So stop looking at that other stuff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I think my biggest thing for me, um, I actually have to unfollow or you can quiet people's stories. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to lie, Selena, I have been told by many that I'm an overworker. I, I have trouble clocking in and clocking out. That's one of my downfalls, but yet I preach uh, self-care. I need yes. to practice what I preach. I know, I know. I, I'm already aware of that. So I'm going to work on that this year, 2023. Those will be my goals <laughs> are to sit back. Um, but so for me, I'm constantly doing and constantly wanting to help people and do these podcasts and everything. But when I see people online doing more, I feel guilty. I feel like, gosh, I should be doing more, but I know deep down I cannot do more. So I have right. to quiet those people, but I, it's honest. It's hard to do. It's hard to do that because your, your mind compares you to those people and which is ridiculous. I think it's human nature, right? So you just have to push back just a little bit against that human nature. And a big part of coaching is just awareness, awareness that, Hey, Oh, I'm doing it again. I'm comparing myself to others. What is my measure? Let me compare to that. Yeah, pretty wild. Yeah, the the big cars, the big houses, the money, those aren't temptations to me. But the people that I feel right. like are doing more, I'm like, oh no, I need to step up my game. I need to keep up with the Joneses. Right. And I'm like, no, no, what are you doing? No. Right. So that's right. good. I love that. All right. So we got one start today. Yep. Two. Answer the question, what does success mean to me? Answer that question. All right. What do we have for number yep. three? Number three is, this is a faith-based one, okay. um, but I think I can also generalize it too. So number three is, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. That's from Psalm 37, verse four. Here is why that is important to me. And then maybe we can see how that can translate maybe to others with of different faiths or different belief systems. First step is delighting. Delighting in the abundance, the blessings, the gifts, the wonderful things that you already have in your life. I know that every single person listening to this podcast can find things around them to delight in, even if it's listening to us right this minute and that's the only thing they can think of. But just delighting in the beauty of nature, in the warm place that you're sitting, in the people that love you, in the delicious meal that you just had, what can you delight yourself in? Because when you do that first, your heart changes. And the things that are put in your heart become more aligned with positive intentions and a place of security rather than a place of grasping and needing and scarcity. So that is my tip number three. Delight yourself in the Lord 
and he'll give you the desires of your heart. I love that. So basically being grateful, showing gratefulness. Mm -hmm. I love that. I have read more research recently. There's actually a guy I follow that talks about mental health and keeping up Mm -hmm. your mental capacity, basically. So it's Mm -hmm. little brain workouts that you can do every day. And so it comes in on every aspect and they all agree sitting down and practicing gratefulness is one of the best things you can do, not only for emotions, just your whole makeup. It just, mm-hmm. you want to start with gratefulness. So I love that. Yes. What just is, makes such a difference. Doesn't it? Isn't that crazy? Just practicing it. And they say saying it out loud. Mm-hmm. What is, yes. Selena, what is one thing today that you're like, man, I'm thankful for that. Even if it was tiny. Did you have that thought today? Uh, well, I'm super grateful that I get to set my own schedule and pick up my kids from school every day and drop them off in the morning and not feel like I am rushing all of the time. I'm super grateful for that. That's amazing. Absolutely. And I know they are too. You're making core memories. Right? Yes. Yeah. I love that so much. I love that. I think one that I have, and it's the weirdest thing. I actually had this uh, on one interview that I did. It's the strangest thing. Every day I work super hard and then I get home, I put my pajamas on and I crawl into bed and there's this moment of total like, oh, Thank you for this bed. Yes. I don't know why. It's just something every night. It's like, man, I am so thankful that I have a bed. I have a pillow. I have sheets. I have a roof over my head. And that thought literally crosses my mind every day after a long day. But I'm proud of it because I'm like, okay, that's simple. And it's things that we take for granted. Yes, girl. I think I'm going to add, I'm super grateful for comfy pajamas. (laughs) That's one of my favorite things. Okay. I love these. So we're already on number four. We are. Okay. Let's do it. What do we have? Number four is begin with the end in mind. Okay. Begin with the end in mind. Oftentimes when we're setting goals, we're standing in the present spot and saying, what do I, what do I want to start doing tomorrow so that my whole life will get in order? I'm going to start working out tomorrow. I'm going to eat right tomorrow. I'm going to read books every day starting tomorrow. Those are lovely ways, lovely goals to set. And I encourage you, if those are the goals you want to set, to go ahead. But I suggest a different way of looking at it. Not what do you want to start tomorrow, but begin at where you want to be later before you write down your first goal. So this is going to sound maybe a little intimidating, but I want you to think about where do I want to be in five years? Hmm. What kind of career, where do I want my job to be in five years? What's going to be happening in with my family and my personal life in five years? What kinds of things do I want to be grateful for? in the next five years that I can look back and say, wow, I'm so blessed. I'm so happy that that happened. Where would you like your financial picture to be in five years or your health or your mental well-being? Paint a picture uh, as clear as you can of what that five-year landmark kind of looks like to you. I suggest a journal entry is a great way to do this. I've also had clients draw a picture or um, create something more artistic with it. Um, so lay out what that might look like. Then it's going to do that thing I talked about before of helping you zoom out first and get a broad picture of where you want to go. Cause then what you do is you say, Oh, if that's where I want to be in five years, what should my first baby step B to take me toward that path. And all of a sudden you are setting goals that you never thought of before. It helps take you out of the box from these are the goals that people normally write of losing 10 pounds or working out or going to bed and saying, no, actually, what are the goals that are going to move me along in a real intentional and purposeful way to a place that I'm super excited about going? So that tip is begin with the end in mind. I love that. 
I think those are perfect because we talked about, you know, on social media, people obsessing about starting goals and I'm going to start mm -hmm. reading tomorrow. I'm going to start a diet tomorrow. And even for me, I never thought, oh yeah, I actually, I'm not, I'm going to be totally honest between me and you and everyone listening. I <laughs> hate the question. Where do you want to be in 10 years? And I think you and I talked about that mm -hmm. last year at some point. You're like, what are your goals? And I'm like, well, funny, I don't set any. And you're probably like, no, 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 come see me. But <laughs> But so for me, I'm totally, so my outlook on it is life waxes and wanes so much that it's kind of just go with it. And as long as you're, and again, this kind of goes back to our Christian beliefs, me and you, which may not be for everyone, mm -hmm. but as long as you are giving praises for what you've got and you are trying your best and it meets your successful goal and you're able to live comfortably, um, pay the bills, that's where I am. But after today, I'm kind of like, okay, that makes sense. My goals can change. And so what mm -hmm. does it look like in five or two? I'm finding myself like do these things that I have not done before. So Selena, congratulations. You're, you're ruining all my beliefs. I'm having yeah. to start all over. <laughs> yeah. So if I sat here and was like, what, what do I look like in five years? The first thing that comes to mind is I'm going to have a lot of gray hair. That's what I will look mm -hmm. like. Um, well, but I don't listen. know. <laughs> I'm going to, that's a good one. I'm really going to have to sit and think about that. Well, and think about it. It's not like you're scripting things out. It's just like you're dreaming. Yeah. Give yourself permission to dream. If you could just dream and imagine and kind of play with it, approach it with a playful attitude. What could it be like in five years? And it's not, again, it's not something that's set in stone. You can change your mind. The Lord can work. The wind can blow. Yeah. Things can happen that change it. But what if you did dream just a little and see, wow could that be possible? It's kind of fun. Yeah. And it takes a little bit of bravery too. Oh, absolutely. A million percent. <laughs> it's so brave to be willing to fail and or succeed. They're both a little bit scary. Oh, I'm telling you. Yes. Okay. I have a personal question before we go to number five. So I have read, sure. there was an, there was an author at one point. I love self-help books. Mm -hmm. um, anything that can help me be a better person or to help be better person for someone else. I love yep. those. So I eat them up and I see you yeah. posting those as well. Um, yeah. I won't mention the name, but an author posted or wrote about how setting goals, you need to over exaggerate them. So you need to pick goals mm -hmm. that are way you feel like are way out of reach and shoot for those. What do you think about that? Cause I'm kind of mixed feelings oh. about that. Like, for example, she was like, if you feel like you could never be make $150,000 a year, why not set that as a goal? And right. I'm kind of like my personal opinion, I'm kind of like, but does that set you up for failure or is it good to dream? I'm going to say yes and no. <laughs> yeah. That for a good I, coaching caught, I caught you off guard a little bit, but I, I'm kind of curious. I, I read that and oh. I found myself being like, you know, I don't know what I think about that. Well, I think it, I think it is both actually, because especially if we're plagued with self-doubt and um, really like maybe perfectionist or um, something like that, it, that can make us not dream as big as possible right? It can make us think small. And I don't believe that we're called to think small. I believe that we're called to, even if I, I believe that we are called to make an impact and that's not a small thing. Even if it's an impact on one person, it could just multiply and affect so many others. You never know what impact you're going to have. That's going to make a huge difference in someone's life. So I think we can't be afraid to think big, to go for something that's outside of our comfort zone. So I applaud that part of it. We need to be encouraged to think big. We need to be encouraged to reach for something that maybe we're telling ourselves, mm, you're not cut out for that, right? However, I also believe that we want to have harmony with our faith, our family, and career. So we don't want to set such a large goal in our career that like, I'm going to do this because I said I would, and 
come what may, I'm going to do anything and everything. And then before you know it, you've sacrificed these other things that are also important to you. So I'm going to say, yes, dream big, go for it, stretch yourself, but don't do it to the consequence of other things that you also value. That's the best answer I could ask for. Yay. I caught you off guard (laughs) and that was great. That was so great. That was almost scripted. Selena, you're so good. I love that. (laughs) That was awesome. That totally makes sense. I like that a lot. That is perfect. Okay. So we've got four. All right. We're wrapping it up. What is number five for setting goals? Mm -hmm. Number five is once you have set your goals, review them often. Okay. So I encourage uh, my clients to write down their goals and then to do that repeatedly to write down your goals. Like I write down my goal. This is totally nerdy, everyone, but I write down my We're goals already there. every, every day. I write, write down every my top day. five goals. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. I feel like that would be so redundant. Does that, it is that is, just kind of how you start your morning off? It is. It's how I start my morning off. Okay. Yeah. And then you see, when you follow me on social media, you see, like, I put what I'm doing that day. Yeah. I've noticed and that everything on my list is related to one of the goals that I'm working on. Wow. Okay. So your days are very intentional. Very intentional. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So I make time for the goals that I'm working on. If not every day, at least every week or every month, I'm working on the goals that I have. And so I encourage you to review your goals often. It's not something that you set, you put in your journal and you close your journal, and then you look at it again in December. Right. It's something that you set and then you look at daily or weekly or monthly and say, how am I progressing on these? Are these still what I want? And what do, what are the next steps I need to take to continue to make progress on them? So review your goals often. You don't have to be as nerdy as me, (laughs) but maybe a little bit more nerdy than you already are. Listen, we, we've already stepped into that nerd realm. We talked about self-help books. We've already talked about like all these. Oh no, we're already there. We've dived in. People have caught on. We're both nerds, Selena. So yeah, you might as well wear that badge. (laughs) That is awesome. I love those. These may, you know, I had you coming on and I thought, man, it's common sense, but it's one of those things we need to be review on, but these are totally things I never would have thought about. Like how mm-hmm. cool. Okay. If you don't mind, let's, yep. s- let's go through all five. So let's just name them off. So number one, what did we have? Don't wait. Don't wait. Start now. All right. Number two. What does success mean to me? Okay. Answer that question. <laughs> Perfect. Number three. Delight yourself in the Lord or express gratitude. I love that. Number four. Begin with the end in mind. Love that. Number five, review your goals often. Awesome. I I'm like super inspired now. I'm motivated. I feel like I want to get up here and do all these goals for myself for the new year. Okay. So here's something I'll run across for myself. What, what if people come in and they're having trouble thinking of goals or setting goals from themselves? What are some ways to be like, okay, here's how you can pick personalized goals. What advice do you have for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think if they follow those five tips, it will be easier than if they don't. Those five tips will really help to step them through. But even beyond that, a couple things that I want um, you, dear listener, to think of if you're still feeling stuck. One, um, stop comparing yourself. Your goals do not have to look like other people's goals. Um, So don't be afraid to create goals that are really unique to you. Um, Another thing is one, a reason that might be getting you stuck is self-sabotage. You're saying, oh, I can't think of goals. So I'm just not going to do that. When you really might actually have some goals that you want that are residing in your heart, but you're just already sabotaging yourself before you even write them down right? Thinking that you're not worthy for it. So um, beware of that. And, um, and don't give yourself unreasonable expectations with your goals. 
do something that seems to fit in your life and feels attainable to you. I think those will help people that are still feeling stuck. I love that. I love that. That is awesome. So fun. <laughs> Um, okay. So how can people find you if they'd like to learn more? Cause you can have like one-on-one -on -one sessions with a life coach. You can have meetings, um, dive deeper into things with you. So how can people find you, Selena? Yes. The best and easiest way is on my website, impactcoachteam.com. You can get access to all of our services there and schedule all of those things that you just talked about. Uh, I'd love for anyone to follow me on social on Instagram. It's at impact underscore coach underscore team to follow that and get all those tips that you were saying that you love to see on social media and on Facebook at impact life coaching. I love that. Thank you so much for taking some time out. I'm so glad that we finally got to sit down. We've, we've been chit chatting via social media and things like that, knowing the same people, but I'm so glad we finally got to sit down and chat. Oh. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's such an honor that Absolutely. you asked me. And this was a ton of fun. Yeah, please come back. At the end of the year, we need to like rehash and see if we met those goals. We need to test people. I love it. Awesome. Well, have a fantastic 2023 and we will be in touch. Excellent. Thanks, Townsend. All right. Okay, guys, if you're in the market to buy or sell, I have the perfect company for you. Clark & Co. Realty is located in the Benton Bryant, Arkansas area they're able to serve you no matter where you're located in the state. They've streamlined the process of buying or selling a home to make it so much easier. They have a team of industry experts that make sure you have access from anything you can think of. I'm talking from local home inspectors to painters to gardeners and so much more just to provide you with the best service possible. They're dedicated to providing the most up-to-date market data in the area. And I think the coolest part is if you go on their website, you can use their easy to use fast property search. You can even create a custom market report to see what's active, under contract, and sold in your neighborhood. Their team is made up of caring, knowledgeable professionals that work around the clock to help you with the process of buying and selling your home. So again, if you're in the market to buy or sell, Clark & Co. Realty is definitely the company for you. Tell them Townsend sent you. Let's be honest. I think we could all use somebody to talk to every now and then. Healing Path Counseling in Conway, Arkansas is 100% my go-to when it comes to therapy. Wendy Blackwood has more credentials than letters in the alphabet. She's won awards for her outstanding services and has a whole page of board memberships. Basically, she knows what she's doing. She works hard to help equip you with the tools needed to live your best life. She even offers a variety of services including, but not limited to, cognitive behavioral therapy, technology assisted counseling, relationship counseling, and EMDR. Trust me, I know therapy can be intimidating at first, but let me assure you, Wendy does her best to make you comfortable and find the best solutions and plans for you. Trust me, don't wait to make the call. Give Wendy Blackwood at Healing Path Counseling a call today. Get started on the best version of you.